Paramahams Nityananda, a rare living incarnation, is named among the world's hundred most spiritually influential personalities today. Paramahams Nityananda has been placed alongside Dalai Lama, Nelson Mandela, Oprah Winfrey, Paulo Coelho and others by Mind, Body, Spirit, the world's top esoteric magazine from Watkins, London's oldest and largest bookstore. A yogi by birth, he has been expressing his power of enlightenment since birth. He has authored more than 500 books in Tamil and English. Translations of these books are available in 26 languages in Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, Hindi, Sanskrit, Gujarati, Oriya, Bengali, Marathi, French, Malay, Polish, Portuguese, Italian, German, Danish, Spanish, Russian and Chinese. He is also an exemplary speaker with over 10,000 hours of profound life solutions through his discourses, social services such as Annadan, free medical care, free educational services with ashrams, schools, temples, hospitals established in more than 140 places around the world offering exceptional services. A powerful spiritual healer who has healed millions of people of diseases from migraine to cancer. A Kriya Yogi who has formulated Kriyas for physical health and mental well-being benefiting thousands. A living master who offers offers practical solutions for our everyday problems. He is the founder and spiritual head of Nityananda Dhyanapitam, a spiritual powerhouse who has revived the sacred Vedic tradition by establishing Vedic temples in places like Los Angeles, San Jose, Seattle, Toronto, Ohio, Oklahoma, Phoenix, St. Louis, Malaysia, Brazil, Paris, Guadeloupe, Dallas, New York, New Jersey, Atlanta, Calgary, Vancouver, Singapore and places in India like Bengaluru, Hyderabad, Tiruvannamalai. A spiritual guru for 10 million followers, an incarnation who transmits the highest spiritual energy through initiation, a contemporary yogi who has revived the Vedic science of yoga worldwide through thousands of yoga centers, an adept in Ashtamaha Siddhis, mystical yogic powers, who has effortlessly awakened the Kundalini of thousands and graced them with spiritual powers, a dynamic young guru who is an inspiration for thousands of youngsters. India's most watched spiritual guru online, a beacon of spiritual light who has triumphed over the forces of religious terrorism and political persecution. Paramahamsa Nityananda is an eternal Kalpataru blessing the world with the boons of material abundance and spiritual enlightenment. He is the 293rd pontiff of the world's most ancient Hindu organization, Madurai Adinam.
naturally spreads is its smell in your mental structure and in your body. So, the awareness which your physical structure experiences, if that feels connected in the, uh, to the awareness of some physical structure, it is called infatuation. Please understand. The awareness, your, your physical structure experiences, if that feels connected to some other awareness of the physical structure or some other physical structure's awareness. There are so many things moving around in the world. Each one of your unit, awareness, the awareness experienced by your mental structure and the awareness experienced by your physical structure. If the two physical structures awareness, two are more, physical structures awareness feels connected, it is called infatuation. If two or more mental structures feels connected, it can be called as attachment. It will be better one. If one or more awarenesses, of course it is funny, you can't say awareness cannot have one or more. Directly just overlaps each other. You can't even call us color overlap. Just flows into each other. It's called love. Two physical structures, if they feel connected, if their awareness feels connected, it's called infatuation. One or more mental structures, if they feel connected, it's attachment. When awareness overlaps beyond the physical and mental structures, it is called love. Now, scan all your relationships with this understanding. Suddenly you see all the problems related to your love, relationship, friendliness, Possessiveness, worry, everything will just disappear. Your marriage will become honeymoon. It will become beautiful, living relationship. The greatness of sexuality is it will disappear. Understand, the greatness of sexual energy is it will disappear the moment the physical and mental structures feels connected and the awareness overlaps. All these magazines go on giving inspiration, tips, this middle age magazines, how to keep your sex life live. <laughs> 10 tips. 20 tips, 30 tips. <laughs> because two things. Either the distance becomes too much, means that awareness in the physical structure, the awareness in the physical structure is not feeling connected. The distance is more. Our awareness in the mental structure and awareness in the mental structure is not feeling connected. The distance is more. This is what happens to 90% of the marriage. There are 10% of the marriage. Really the awareness and awareness overlaps each other. Such beautiful communion happens. Even there the sex disappears. 11 years of the life, the married life, only the sex should be there. Whether the overlap of the awareness happens, then just you see, you don't need to confirm with each other that you love each other through the sexual act. Suddenly the necessity does not happen. Simply sitting together is something extraordinary. That's why the, the Vedic tradition, the marriage ceremony, there's a Asi Vachana, means the blessing word. 
By the time he had let you let both of you became mother of the son, father and daughter. In both ways, if the distance becomes more, our distance completely disappears. Both ways, the sex disappears. Just either sex is like a liquid, fluid, either it freezes cold like ice or it evaporates like a steam. If it evaporates as steam, your consciousness is levitated and your whole system evolves into enlightenment. It becomes cold, frozen, ice, you are caught in the ice box. Understand this definition of love. Thousands of your problems, not only related to relationship, I can say, there are thousands of relationships which are perversions of thousands of problems which are perversions of relationship problems. When the relationship is not fulfilling, suddenly anything she does or he does irritates you. So this is what I call perversions of relationship problems. If you know the real love, even intellectually, you will start radiating healing energy. Healing does not mean just you will put your hand on somebody who is somewhere sick and that person will come out of the it's like pain, stomach pain or headache or cancer. Put your hand on your own head. <laughs> yeah, all of that. Headaches you have and you give to others. <laughs> this is the healing stick I am giving to all of you. Understanding about love. Feel this understanding in all your relationships. Sit and scan. What is my relationship with my father? How is it? What is my relationship with my mother? How is it? What is my relationship with my spouse? How is it? What is my relationship with my brother? How is it? What is my relationship with my friends? How is it? What is my relationship with the world? How is it? I have seen people wasting years just with their relationship with the dog. It is not love. It is not love. Foolish infatuation. Very third grade perverted infatuation. I tell you, having a pet deity, Ishta Devata, is thousand times better than having a pet dog. <laughs> but these idiots, without understanding, having a pet dog has become a fashion, having a pet deity is something like a old, outdated. Our healing process is based on love. So when you radiate love, love is the emotion which is immediately reciprocated by cosmos. Sex is the emotion which is immediately contradicted by cosmos. Please understand. Love is the emotion which immediately responded by anything in the cosmos. When you feel love, within few moments you will see it comes back to you from the cosmos. Immediately cosmos responds to it. The tree, the flower, mountain, the nature, everything responds to it. The sex, even your own body will be against it. See, when it is awakened, even your own body immediately will resist. 
our whole healing process is love based so understand it is completely love based so continue 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 intensely radiate love you will see and experience whatever you are asking love is today's subject it's almost talking about the whole cosmos whole universe all the energies which moves the cosmos the very force very life very energy which is cosmos can be called as love i'll talk about different dimensions of love how love has become this matter and love how the love resides as energy inside this matter and how love activates as energy the matter and how love makes matter to move i can say the beginning and continuous flow and end everything is love the very life force is love the different levels and different dimensions of love if we understand we can understand in which level we are which dimension of love we are experiencing in which level we need to move and which dimension we need to experience and how our being can become more and more blissful and spiritual experiential that's the main thing understand whenever you experience love even if it is in the lowest form as you think the moment you experience the very experience leads you to the next level of love for example if you experience very low level of love a crude form just the physical level if you really experience without any layer between you and that experience suddenly that very experience makes you go to the next level the higher level that is why in tantra they say even if you go through a physical experience without any conditioning simple pure experience suddenly you will see you are transported to the higher dimension of love higher dimensions of love so whether it is lower or middle or higher or highest any form if the love is experienced it leads you to the higher level but without experiencing if you are just intellectualizing just going on thinking 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 even if you are thinking about the highest form of love just thinking will not make you experience so that is why i feel more comfortable to say love is god than pragnanam brahma pragnanam brahma means the knowledge consciousness that is god both means same when you say whether love is god or consciousness is god both means same but the word love is god can be more applied in your life the word love is god is not just a declaration it is a technique also if you start experiencing love even in the lowest form directly it lead you to the higher and higher and higher spaces if 
you are only intellectualizing, conceptualizing, thinking about the love even in the highest form, it won't be leading you anywhere. That is why the people who go on thinking the Pragnanam Brahma, consciousness is God, knowledge is God, super consciousness is God, they go on creating the different, different, different intellectual layers but never experience love. Only a personality like Shankara who experienced love, when he says Pragnanam Brahma, it is experience, it is truth. Ordinarily, without experiencing the love, if you just go on repeating the word, the higher consciousness is God, Pragnanam Brahma, it is just nothing but a word, verbal game. The pundits playing. So, first start experiencing the love even if it is in the lowest form. Whatever form it is available in your inner space, start living it. Our senses have lost its truth. Our senses have lost its purity. First thing you need to do, if you want to experience love, purify your senses, means be alive in every sense. If you are looking, look intensely. If you are smelling, smell intensely. If you are listening, listen intensely. If you are touching, touch intensely. If you are tasting, taste intensely. Nothing. A simple technique I can give you to heal others. When you want to heal others, put your hand on that person. Just only feel the area your body is touching his body. Just be alive only in that zone. Forget about all other parts of your body, his body. Just be the touch. You will see, whenever you become just the touch, your love oozes out, radiates through the touch. When you become just look, your look will radiate love. When you become just listening, your listening will radiate love. If you just, just radiate love through the touch, just become the touch, you will heal the other being. You will heal the other person. You will radiate love. You will just radiate life. Removing the conditionings about the love. Either you are taught, if you love, you will be caught in bondage or if you love, you, it will lead to suffering. What was the formula taught to you about love? That is a very major important thing. How your love is going to end? Please understand. If you are taught right formulas about love, you will not have conditioning. If you are taught wrong formulas about love, that very wrong formulas will not allow you to relax in love. I have seen many people. They can't relax in love. They are not comfortable with love. So much of fear about love. So much of fear about love. They can't get into love. They can't relax into love. So much of fear. They will think, oh, I don't know what will happen to this love. How it will end. Will it end in a wrong way? Will this person also cheat me? If you are made to believe very clearly that all your love will end in pain, it will end in pain. You will be waiting to end it in pain. Because whatever you believe, you want to make it as reality and see it. Please understand. Your personality is such, whatever you strongly believe, you will make it as reality. So, if you are strongly believing love is going to lead to pain, 
you will see it leads to pain it will lead you to pain conditioning needs to be removed about the life about the love then you will experience the pure love directly do not have the conditioning your love will lead to suffering or your love will lead to joy just be simple straight let me see to what it leads let me see to what it takes me so when the love happens in you just be a pure love that is why i am saying the ability to live in utter insecurity to go with the love to go with the flow of the love makes you experience the real love real life please understand even if you are attached to life too much you will not be able to love completely the love will not be an experience in you i have seen people when they are attached to the particular secured way of life they kill love in them they decide no if i say yes to love the secure life is in danger love is wild and sometime when it comes it really happens in you like a wild fire it happens in you like a wild fire when you enter into that wild fire even if you experience an ordinary hormonal way a lust suddenly you will see that lust gets burnt see there is a beautiful sutra in bhagavad gita brahmarpanam brahmahavihi brahmagnau brahmanahut see when the real love happens in you even your hormonal feelings lust when it comes along with the love pour it in that pure love even the hormonal torture the ordinary sex the need for ordinary physical pleasure when it is poured into the love it will be purified it will just be completely be purified attachment to life does not let you to burn yourself in the love the pure love takes you beyond life and death i can say pure love is jivan mukti living enlightenment there is a very beautiful story the life of shankara it's a very beautiful story great meaning is there behind that story as a young boy wanted to become a sanyasi but mother is not allowing him one day he was taking bath in the river a crocodile catches him and he is about to die he cries oh mother at least now give give permission for me to become a sanyasi i'll die as sanyasi i will not be born again mother feels so oh, after all he is going to die his last wish let him become sanyasi what to do nobody can save him so she says okay you can become a sanyasi the woman shankara decides i am becoming sanyasi i am a sanyasi then suddenly the crocodile disappears he is left free and he became sanyasi very beautiful story please understand the meaning behind that story you need to understand mother is attachment to life mother is the attachment to life please understand life in the very lower form very lower form because the mother who is not allowing a son to become a jivan mukta sanyasi means she wants to possess him she wants to keep him with her under her please understand the mother's womb may be very cozy safe great place to grow your body but after 9 months if you continue to stay there it is neither good for you nor good for the mother when time comes you need to come out same way psychologically when time comes you need to move out you need to take your own responsibility mother who does not want to deliver the baby 
physically is arming the baby. Same way mother who does not want to deliver the baby psychologically is arming the baby. Mother, the attachment towards life, an ordinary attachment towards the life. But his love for enlightenment means the pure fire of love is so strong he is waiting for the situation. Then death happens in him. Means, please understand, whenever a small attachment for life tries to possess the pure fire of love, the love feels it like a death. Possessiveness is death for pure love. When somebody tries to possess the pure love, the pure love feels it like a death. That is why whenever you try to catch the bliss, try to possess bliss, your hands will be empty. Beautiful breeze. If your hands are open, it will be on your body. Try to hold, catch the breeze. You will have only empty hand. The possessiveness makes love feel like a death. That is what is that crocodile. Crocodile and the mother are both one and the same. Two different dimensions. The pure love feels the attachment to the small life as death. Then when both are in front, the pure love says, both of you now decide, who want to have me? Either the death can have me or attachment to life can have me. Both are actually one and the same. If the attachment to life, if the possessiveness takes over the love, the love is dead. So if the possessiveness is taken over, if the possessiveness takes over the love, if the love is taken over by the possessiveness, it is death. So Shankara says, at least in death, allow me, to be as I am. He requests the possessiveness. He requests the attachment to life. Suddenly attachment to life understands. Yes. I am destroying him. Anyhow, if I stay with him, he will be destroyed. Let me move out. Let me relax. Let me settle down. Please understand. Whenever you possess your lover, you are killing the love in him or her. You are reducing that person to an ordinary person. The joy which you had around him or her will simply disappear. Possessiveness reduces beings into matter. When the attachment to life understands, if it continues to possess love, pure life, it will reduce that into the death. It relaxes. Let's go. When the possessiveness is gone, death also has gone. The life, the love achieves enlightenment. That's the significance, meaning behind this beautiful story. Understand? It's a very beautiful story. Just see. When mother says, all right, you can become sannyasi, I'll lose my possessiveness over you. I give you the freedom. Suddenly death disappears. Crocodile is not there. Death is not there. When you take the possessiveness away from the love, suddenly love becomes enlightenment. When you take your conditionings away from the love, love becomes enlightenment. If you have any conditioning about love, Love will lead to lust, or love will lead to suffering, or love will lead to joy, love will lead to bliss, love will lead to pain. Even if you have the conditioning, love will lead me to God. Drop everything. Drop all conditionings. The first level you will see, love will lead to joy. That is the muladhara level. Next. Love will lead to safety, security. That is the Swadhisthana level. 
love will lead to peace that is the manipuraga level worry free life that is the manipuraga level love will lead to more and more love energy that is the anahata level love will lead to bliss that is the anya level love will lead me to god that is the sagasrara level but all seven are conditionings drop all seven love will not lead you to god love is god the moment possessiveness attachment for life is lost death is lost love is enlightenment love is god as long as you think even the idea love will lead you to god it will not you are caught so drop all conditionings about love all statements about love make your body ready pure to experience love in any form it happens in you first thing make your mind ready to experience love without any conditioning as it happens to you you will see love is god love is enlightenment love is jeevan mukti today's question there's a beautiful question here swami ji you said love activates matter how can love activate matter and make it move love really infuses energy into whatever it is directed please understand if you direct love towards anything whether it is a person or matter or plant or animal anything it gets infused with energy there's a beautiful story connected to paramahamsa yogananda that he or some of his disciple practiced showering love on a rose plant telling that i'll protect you i'll keep you safely you can be secured you don't need this thorns to protect yourself don't be in insecurity every day talking in a very loving and healing way to that plant in a month that plant dropped all the thorns it was only a rose there was no thorns means love activates even the plant and if you see ramakrishna's life ramakrishna paramahamsa's life a great so many examples can be given one he how he related with that kali's deity kali statue it is not a statue for him anymore just because of his intense love the matter has become energy alive in his many experiences he shares when he gives food he saw mother eating and when he touches the nose and feels he says i saw devi breathing and there are so many strong solid experiences to prove that love activates matter love makes the matter alive in karnataka there is a place called udupi there there is a great saint kanagadasa when he went to have darshan of krishna krishna turned the whole deity turned and gave darshan to him it is still called that hole through which kanagadasa had darshan is called kanagana kindi means the window of kanagadasa still krishna gives darshan to the whole world through that hole so please understand there are thousands of evidences where love activates the matter you can try even in your life the plant or tree or river with which you are living every day sit with them for 10 15 minutes you don't need to talk but just feel a deep love for them the nature the hill or the river or the tree just have a deep feeling connection love
10 minutes every day sit suddenly you will see that you are able to relate with them they are able to relate with you and communion will start first it will be communication then it will become communion so love makes matter alive when you shower love matter becomes life when you take away the love even life becomes matter there is another one small incident happened i was traveling i don't know which place maybe around the area of madhya pradesh or maharashtra there was one uh, a small tree and under that tree the three bricks bricks which is used for construction is kept with a turmeric powder applied on it and some puja being done usually in the evening time when i rest i'll uh, search for some brick for the head <laughs> to keep the head and lie down i saw that area nobody was there just the three bricks were there and i did not know that it was being worshiped by some villager as a deity and i just took that picked up that brick and <laughs> put it for my head and lie down and really in 10 minutes one village guy elderly person is running towards me his house was maybe 1 mile away he ran towards me and he was he came when he came near me understood i am a sadhu because i was a sadhu he did not beat me he told do you know this is shiva i worship he appeared in my dream and told that you are lying on him <laughs> truth really understand so that's why i came here and he brought a small pillow that's another one beautiful thing <laughs> he brought a pillow <laughs> lie down on this pillow and leave him there put that murti back from one mile in his he was lying down in his home he says i had a dream shiva told me that one sadhu is lying on me take that <laughs> and he brought the pillow and told me to put the brick that that side we don't know who all are having connection to what all <laughs> just is deep love for that ordinary brick which is used for construction can create a telepathy power in him understand i heard i read the read an article american army is trying to develop telepathy power to use during the war times they are doing some research and development to use this telepathy sending message through the mind understand ordinary villager just is love for a brick of course i am afraid to use the word brick again now he may get a <laughs> <laughs> i don't think he is dead only that elderly lady was dead i don't think he is dead because i never try to trace him also anyhow just simple love to the ordinary looking brick can create such a deep telepathy connection between him and mahadeva then understand between him and shiva this ordinary brick is acting like a cell phone you can't imagine the way in which that guy ran towards me and the way in which he was shouting at me just because i am a sadhu he left me otherwise i would have had the puja <laughs> the puja from him <laughs> just say want all of you to understand the power of love the power of simple love people who cannot experience understand the space of being in love with the master cannot understand the truth that's why i always tell we are not cult we are a culture understand there is a big difference between these two there is a big difference between these two 
when you are in deeply love you will see the uniqueness of the truth and everything will become alive reality to you and you will see every step you take in your life feels ecstatic feels joyful i cannot imagine from one mile somebody running with a pillow saying that you are sleeping on my god understand the strong telepathy connection hear the sutra which shiva says look lovingly at some object do not go to another object here in the middle of the object let the blessing happen to you you see you do not even have to choose a deity you can choose anything with which you feel connected if it is coca cola bottle okay <laughs> but the problem is with the coca cola bottle you will have only lust not love when you see that bottle you will think only what i can get out of it understand looking with the love and looking with the lust are two different thing when you see a beautiful man or woman when you look you only look what i can get out of that person then it is looking with lust not with love love means what i can add to that person what way i can be of some help to that person if you decide or think of adding something then it's looking with love the moment you see and you start calculating what i can get out of that person it is looking with lust understand looking with love looking with lust two different thing here mahadeva says not only two different thing diametrically opposite diametrically opposite here mahadeva says look lovingly at some object if you use the divine objects it is lot more easy because the possibility of lust is less possibility of love is more from the young age you are taught to look with a love and respect so it is easy to connect it is easy to relate have any one deity or the photograph of the god or guru try to look with a deep love without moving to the other object understand that is the main that is the basic thing do not move to the other object the moment you start jumping to the other object you are tired of this object the love has disappeared <laughs> understand as long as love is there that object is unique not number not number for example if you are just a worker maybe a clerk or a attendant just a clerk in the office if you die nothing will stop some other somebody else will come replace you the job will continue life will continue you are just an utility number figure that's all but if somebody is in love with that same clerk if that clerk dies that person will never be again the same wherever you are just a number even if you die that mechanism will not suffer wherever you are in love with the, some object or person or some ob, somebody is in love with you you become unique naturally your death cannot be replaced that person will miss you that person's life will never be the same again love makes things unique love makes things unique the other day 
we were having an energizing ceremony here in the temple all the swamis all of us are sitting and before preparing for the ceremony one disciple she asked me swami ji every day you are seeing us all our mistakes confusions are you not bored by us it was a very honest question because they know if sometime i tell them do some new mistake i will be entertained <laughs> not the same mistakes <laughs> because even to commit new new mistakes you need intelligence <laughs> she was asking that don't you feel bored i told just because of my very love i feel everybody is unique understand i do not look upon the devotees or disciples as number it is unique that is why with so much of patience i continue to work with everybody if it is just a number forget about it next person will do the work over devotees or disciples are not number for me because of my love for them they are unique everybody is unique of course i never miss anybody just because of complete fulfillment but otherwise everybody adds something everybody is welcomed is expected is needed is wanted is required to be here every individual is unique same way when you are in love with the master he is needed he is unique when that love is not there one more swami we can go to the other ananda what is there if you just type only nityananda at least 2 lakh 200000 websites are opening <laughs> just nityananda if you type swami nityananda i don't know how many million website will open <laughs> and if he is not then some other swami that's all if you are a number you can be replaced if the love element of love comes to play between you and the other person you are no more a number you are unique being irreplaceable unique being love adds life even to the person with love the person is a spirit life without love the person is reduced to a thing utility without love when you look when you look at somebody a beautiful man or woman and planning for what i can get out of that person you are reducing him to a thing not as a being as a spirit only when you look at that person with a love he is a spirit he is a living being when that love is not there he is a thing that is why whenever people look at you with a lustful eyes you feel repulsive it looks ugly you just cover yourself you just hide yourself you want to move out of that place whenever somebody looks at you with a deep love you just feel like being around that person continuously even if you get only one glimpse one eye contact with him you will be waiting for it you will be just waiting for that one contact just waiting for that one glimpse one look it's a love which adds value to the uniqueness let me first express from the angle of patanjali patanjali talks about love here for the sake of samyama please understand he gives us as technique 
He says, do samyama on these great qualities and excel in them. Through this he approves the expression of love and he instructs all the yogis to excel in love. He makes this as a technique, a powerful expression, expression of the consciousness in you. When it penetrates, you are blocking low mood logic and expresses itself in spite of your logic, it is called love. Understand? Inside you, there is an intense superconsciousness constantly waiting to break through your body and express itself. But your secured low mood logic which goes on saying, no, 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 you will be exploited, you will be exploited, you will be exploited. If you are so open, so alive, whoever goes around you will exploit you. Physically, mentally, economically. Men have a fear women will exploit economically if they are too loving. Women feel if they are too loving, men will exploit them physically. Both of them feel, if they are too loving, others will exploit them emotionally. So always the fear, if you are loving, you will be exploited. Very dangerous. So there is a certain logic in you, which completely bans you from flowing. I want all of you to know, your life is like a river. Only two ways of life exist. One, the river which is embanked. The river which is dammed. Embanked means, don't completely stop. Use it properly only Tell the river where it should not go. That's all. Making the rules minimum so that the flow of life also is useful for you. It is like a making embankment for Kaveri or Ganga. There is another one way of life completely blocking it, stop. From now onwards, we will tell, di dictate, direct, whatever you should do. When the consciousness expresses in you, love is like embankment, guiding you, your flow. The insecure logic which is against the love is like a dam. Build the dam, that's it. Then exploit as you want. All the fellows are afraid of bank, but they don't understand they are caught in the dam. The life flow in you. It's like a river. If you are afraid of love, you are afraid of the embankment happening around you. True. Embankment does also does some restrictions. But the fear of love, the secured logic which denies love, 
which goes on talking and creating ideas against love in you is a dam it just completely stops the life force not just the shining in the eyes even the shining in the skin changes when you stop the flow of love in you sweet experiences of love constantly reminds you when you open up i am not talking about only romantic love which is towards one person i am talking about the love suddenly opens up in you towards whole and your very self rarely you will fall in love with yourself the yellow journalist who is sitting inside you constantly writing articles and editorials about you is dam for love the fear he creates about love is not protection for you it is destruction for you dam is not a protection for river it is a destruction for river only embankment is a protection for river love is embankment logic is dam do samyama on love that is what patanjali says means sit and meditate on the intense beautiful inner space you go through when you are in love with you and with the whole understand here patanjali is not saying contemplate on the love which was directed towards one person no when at some time you just feel so good about being you being who you are but it happens very rarely that's a big problem if you are feeling deeply good at wow i am a, i am really worthy i am really worthy of what i am i am really worthy of life i am really worthy of whatever is happening around me when you are experiencing the love for yourself suddenly you will experience that love for the whole you will see then everybody everything is worthy of what they are the whole when the love is experienced towards you by you you will suddenly experience that towards the whole so meditate on that love surely every one of you would have experienced that kind of moments at least few times in your life when you feel love towards you and the love towards the whole everything you feel like blessing everybody and everything do samyama on that inner space not just the just the love directed towards one person that may have it oh, its own investments vested interest and all that that is okay nothing wrong but that is not supposed to be the ultimate or Patanjali does not expect you to do samyama on that. Do samyama on the love experience which you had towards you, towards the whole. You will just excel, radiate those qualities. Not only that. you will be able to transmit those qualities 
by your very presence the word very beautiful word balani maitriyadishu balani means strength the strength has a three different definition one you will have that quality second you will be able to transmit that quality to others third you know how to have that quality as a strength for you he is not saying doing samyama and love will make you weak no i have seen many people claiming their weakness as love no love will be out of strength and it will make you creative alive balani patanjali uses the word strength friendliness and love when you contemplate on it do samyama on it when it starts expressing it will be a strength because you will be in love with you and the whole second you will be able to transmit it third you just know how to use that as a strength power can love also become a meditation only love can become meditation without the component of love any technique you do will be dry dull you will not be able to continue more than few days i have seen people doing this technique that technique but not more than few days only with a deep love even a technique become meditation please understand technique is not meditation technique becomes meditation when the love is added when the love is added anything you do is meditation when you are floating in love you are in meditation real meditation will awaken love in you the real love will awaken meditation in you there are two different names when you are soul with it with its pure energy flows through your senses to the outer world it can be called as love the same energy when it flows inward it can be called as meditation whether it is love or meditation from same source same energy same purity love should become meditation meditation should become love please understand from my own experience i can say the time i spent with arunagiri yogeshwara in the physical form maybe i don't know around 9 months from summer vacation to the end of the year around april march april that time to end of the year in india april is the time the summer vacation starts usually the end of the year around 9 months i can say the time i spent with him physically having his darshan being around him i can say still i remember very clearly the experience of love in me that was the first and i can say in a way last experience i experienced love in such a beautiful way towards a person towards a being then it became a different experience kind of a radiating and connecting with the whole world but the kind of love i experienced with him 
I used to continuously feel what I can do to him, what I can give him. But I am a small boy, it will feel very silly. What can I give to a God himself, an incarnation, an avatara purusha? At that time I do not know all these big big words, this avatara purusha, God and all that. I know that he is a sadhu. From my idea, any sadhu means he is an enlightened or avatara purusha. That's all. These big big words I do not know. But I know sadhu means God. That's the way I felt. And it was such a, such an intense connection, experience. Still I remember, in the night I will be sitting with that alarm clock and changing the time, pushing the time fast so that early morning again I can rush to the temple to see him, to have his darshan. But of course, me changing the alarm clock won't push the time. <laughs> that intense love and night only when the watchman is about to close the temple, when they go around the temple and vacating everybody, I will come out, out of the temple. Whole day practically I will be sitting with him. I have never bothered about food or water. When I was, I was around him, I, I did... I, Never even remembered about food or water. Just sitting, sitting, talking or walking with him, going around that area. Nothing particular. Not that he will be teaching me in a very systematic way. Nothing like that. Sitting and chatting casually. And still I remember, when I had his darshan, it is not that the other things have been taken away from my sight. I was able to see everything very clearly. It was physical darshan. So just sitting, chatting, we don't know how time passes. I continuously used to feel what I can give, whatever I get in my hand, whether it is a little money in the house or uh, uh, some clothes or some sweets, anything I am given in the house. The first thing I will pack it and keep it for him and bring it to him. <laughs> he will laugh. That's, of course, sometime he will eat also. He will enjoy. And there is a beautiful story in Saint named Kannapar. There is a very, it's a very beautiful story that Saint, he sees a Shivalinga in a place called Kalahasti in Andhra Pradesh and he just falls in love with the deity. He is just in love with the deity, with Shiva. And the story says Shiva wanted to test his devotion and in that Shivalinga the eye was carved, in that, from that eye the blood started oozing out. This Kannapar tried all the herbal medicines and everything to heal him, heal the eyes, nothing worked out. He is a hunter, so he knows only one medic, uh, method, eye for eye will heal the eye. So he just removes his own eye and replaces it in the place of Shiva's eye. The story says the first eye bleeding stopped and immediately within a few minutes the next eye started bleeding and he is not bothered, he was ready to give even the second eye. But before taking his second eye, he suddenly remembered, if I take my second eye, I will become blind. How will I find out where to fix the eye, where the Shiva's eye is there? So he puts his leg on the second eye of Shiva as a mark. Then he removes his second eye to fix on the Shiva's eye. At that moment, Shiva appears and gives darshan and gives him enlightenment and Shiva Padavi, Shiva's Ayujya, we call it means becoming one with Shiva. Very beautiful story. The love became meditation. That love for Shiva, whole day he was living in meditation. That is why he just feels, what can I give, what can I give, what can I give? I can understand that Kannapar's feeling. 
because I went through that same feeling with Arunagiri Yogeshwara. It was such a strong experience. The deep love simply becomes meditation and real meditation just becomes love in you. Love, energy, meditation, compassion, all these are same ingredient with different names. Different names, intelligence, energy, love, compassion, meditation, all these things are just different words for the same experience. Try to go and sit in front of any one deity which you really love or any other object which you really feel loving. Sit in front of it. Look very deeply, lovingly, just became look. Let your consciousness, consciousness be completely centered on your eyes. Let your hand, leg, body, everything lose its very existence. Let you forget about all, the, all those things. Let everything disappear. Let you just become eyes. Look deeply with a deep love for few minutes without jumping into the other object. If you have jumped to other object, come back. Get back. And just sit with a deep love completely in a relaxed way. You will see a very deep silence, very deep bliss, very deep blessing starts coming out of your system. You need to understand one more thing. All techniques can lead only to peace. When the peace settles inside your system, bliss will explode. Do not expect the bliss which is being expressed or shown in my body language. Meditation will lead you only to peace. And when the peace settles inside your system, when your nerves are cleaned, when your nervous system is cleaned by the peace, the settling peace, the bliss will explode. You will start expressing the bliss, which is expressed in the master's body language. Try, try this meditation technique with any one deity, with a deep love, and silence, let the blessing happen to you, let the blessing happen to everyone. Welcome to Inner Awakening, the most powerful personal transformation retreat you could ever experience. In just 21 days, thousands are already experiencing the shortest route to constantly high energy levels, visible anti-aging, healing of chronic diseases, fulfilling relationships and higher states of consciousness. What is the secret behind this transformation? Kundalini means the inner potential energy. Once it is awakened, opens the different doors for the conscious experience in you. I can say which is a master key for all extraordinary spiritual experiences. This extraordinary program is conducted personally by Paramahamsa Nityananda in the vibrant atmosphere of Nityananda Dhyanapitam Ashram. Open yourself to the benefits of Nitya Yoga and practical meditation. Experience physical and mental healing. Discover simple ways to handle life with success. Above all, 
Enjoy individual darshan and blessings from Paramahamsa Nityananda every day. Take 21 days for yourself and carry home the transformation of a lifetime.